Hello again, and welcome back to Educator.com's Advanced PHP with MySQL course. In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about a new SQL command known as the update command. We're going to be going over uh, what an update command or an update statement looks like, which is used as the name implies to update information in the database. Basically, what it does is it um, updates information for a particular set of rows in a database. We're going to talk about how to use the update. Uh, how to run an update query from PHP script. And then we're going to go over two um, built in functions into PHP uh, HTML special cars, cares, and add slashes, which are um, two functions that are used to, uh, basic, uh, to be able to effectively retrieve information from the database to output it, and then also to add information, uh, to be able to appropriately add information uh, to a database. So uh, as mentioned, an update statement is basically used to update um, data values for specific rows in the database, uh, in a table in the database. It has the uh, following syntax here. It basically is the keyword update uh, followed by the name of the table that you're trying to update rows on. So this is saying update rows in the items table. And then it has the set keyword. And basically what then you do is you have a comma separated list of uh, column names with the values you want to set them to. So for example, this is saying update um, the rows in the items table and set the column name equal to uh, the and set the column name to have the value blue t-shirt and set the price value equal to 899 for any row where, and again it makes use of a where clause, um, where item ID equals 1001. So what, so what this entire query here is saying is update the item 1001 row in the items table so that its name is blue t-shirt and then its price is 899 again just to point out notice that our strings are enclosed in single quotation marks uh, the where clause operates uh, just like for select statements and also as <clears throat> that we have done in our delete statements so it can use comparison and logical operators uh, so you can um, actually update multiple rows at the same time in a database uh, for example, maybe instead of saying where item ID equals 1001, you could say using a comparison operator where item ID is less than 1004. Now this may not be something you want to do, but just as an example, this would say, so update all the rows in the items table, set their name, va name uh, value equal to blue t-shirt, set the price equal to 899 for all the items where the item ID is less than 1004, so you'd actually update multiple rows. If you want to update column values for all of the rows in a table, uh, for example, let's say we wanted to update, um, we've switched over our website so all of our image files are now JPEG. Uh, so all of our item image files are JPEG and they have JPEG extension. Well, you could run this update statement here and you just leave out the where clause and that's going to update every row in the table. So this is going to say update all the rows and items and set the column value image file extension for each row equal to the value, uh, the string JPEG, J, JPG. And you notice that there's uh, no where clause here, and or where statement, and what that's going to do is basically make that updated statement apply to all the rows in the table. So let's take a look at, um, I've logged into our MySQL monitor so we can uh, play with the, with the database. And if we, let's take a look at what we have in our items table, for example. So this is the information we have about the particular items. Let's say we want to update uh, our baseball bat um, row to just be a baseball. Let's say the item actually represents a baseball now. Well, what we can do is we can say update the items table. We want to set the name column equal to just baseball. And we want to do that for all rows where the item ID equals, uh, let's see, 1003. Because that item ID is a, is a primary key, we know that this uh, update statement is only going to apply to one row. And when we run it, it's going to say uh, query was OK, uh, one row was affected, one row is matched, one row was changed. If we run our select query again, we can see that now item 1003 is called baseball. One thing to note is that if you, try, let's say we try to run the same query again, uh, where we're trying to update the name of it. Uh, it's going to say that one row matched. It found one row that matched this where clause, but it wasn't changed because nothing changed in it. Uh, so it's going to say zero rows affected. And that's going to come up when we talk about um, 
how to use these update statements from uh, PHP because we use the affected rows property of our MySQLI object to uh, sometimes determine whether a query was successful or not. So um, even though a query may say be successful in that it assures that the data is set to how what updated to how you want it, uh, it's not might not affect any rows if the data actually did not change. <clears throat> so the way we run an update query from PHP is the same as we do for our insert and delete queries. Um, they don't return a result set. We basically can test the return value of query to, uh, it's a truth value to see whether it was successful or not. It returns true if the update was uh, successful, false if it wasn't. We can also check the affected rows property of our MySQLi object. Um, and, what <clears throat> and what that allows to do is to see the number of rows that were updated. Now as mentioned, the first time you run the query, if you're actually changing information, it'll let you know the number of rows that were changed. If you run it again, affected rows might say is going to say zero if you update the same data. Uh, so that's something you have to consider when you're testing on, on whether you want to when you decide how to test if an update was uh, successful or not. So assuming we already have a connection to our database, it's a as the DB variable, it's a MySQLI object. It's already connected to our advanced PHP database. If we have this query here, update items, set price equal to 15. There's no where clause on this query, so this is going to update all of the rows in our items table, and it's basically going to say set the price of every item in the table to 15. We're going to run the query. This results um, uh, variable can be tested for true or false to see whether the update succeeded or not, and then uh, we can also output the number of rows that were affected by the query. So in this case, if we had six items in our table, affected rows would say six the first time it was run. The second time it was run, it would actually report um, zero. So let's go take a look at uh, a script we've created that um, shows how to use this in PHP. It's just called updateitem.php. Uh, it follows sort of the four, as with any um, SQL queries, you have the sort of four steps that you go through uh, when running a MySQL query, connect to the database, you run the query, process the results, close the connection. So we have in the beginning of the script our connection to the database. Then we run our SQL statement. In this case, we're running a, a static statement um, that's just saying update the items, um, the items table, set the price equal to zero dollars where the item ID equals 1001. So basically we're saying update item 1001 so that its price is uh, zero. We run the query. Uh, we test that only one row um, was updated because it's a, a, the where clause specifies a primary key value. We know it should only update one row. The first time we run this, it's, it, if the query is successful, it's going to return uh, that one row was affected, and then we're going to be able to output the number of rows affected was. Now, if we run it a second time, as you'll see, uh, it's going to show that actually it'll show what would, what would be made considered an error. There's an error updating the item, and that's because um, the, it's just trying to update the same information again and it doesn't affect any of the rows. Then we simply close our database connection. So if we look at the state of our items table again, we can see that um, item 1001 currently has a price of $15. So if we go ahead and we run this first example that's going to run that query, we can see the number of rows updated was 1. Let us know that the query was successful. If we go and look at our items table again, we can see now that the price of the the item 1001 has been set to zero, so the update query was successful. If we try to refresh the page, which is going to try to run that query again, we're going to get that error message. There was an error update in the item, and so that's not uh, necessarily an error, but it's because the rows, no rows were affected, and we were testing on the affected rows property, so that's just something you need to consider. And if we look at our items table, no nothing has changed, and so that's why it shows up as um, zero rows affected. <clears throat> 